It has been about four weeks since my new MacBook Pro was delivered and I have been using it pretty regularly since then. So I figured it was time to do a quick update slash review and tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Just to give you a little bit of a spoiler, I actually really like the new MacBook Pro and I am very happy that I picked it up. To give you guys a recap of my unboxing video, I am coming from a mid-2012 MacBook Pro, 13-inch MacBook Pro with the non-retina screen. Coming from that model, despite all the user upgrades that I did to it on my own, um, it's still quite a big upgrade from that to the new 15 inch with the touch bar. So I'm going to start with the things that I don't like about this laptop and then finish off with things that I do like because there actually aren't a lot of things that I don't like about it. Although, I mean, it's good for you to know to make an informed decision on what you're buying because it does have some downsides. So the first thing that I don't like about this laptop and it's kind of a downside is that this laptop is not user upgradable, which means that the specs that you buy it at today are the specs you got to live with until you get an entirely new laptop. So you can't upgrade the SSD you can't upgrade the RAM. Two reasons. One, because those parts are actually soldered down, so they're soldered to the motherboard. And reason number two is those parts are actually proprietary to Apple. The second thing I don't like about this laptop is the fact that they got rid of the MagSafe. So because this laptop just uses USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 ports, you have to get rid of the MagSafe. It was just really easy because it was magnetic, first of all, so you never really had to work too hard to get the charger onto the laptop. Whereas with the new Thunderbolt 3 or USB-C chargers, um, you kind of have to use two hands in order to actually plug it in, which isn't that big of a deal. I also really like that because the fact that the MagSafe was magnetic, it tugged really easily off so if someone tripped over your cable if you're just in a rush you can just yank the cable really easily and then off you go now although I really do miss the MagSafe adapter I actually don't find that I have needed it per se because over the past four weeks that I've been using it haven't tripped over the charging cable on my laptop. I actually really like the fact that you can charge your new MacBook Pros on any of the four USB-C ports because really that was the main reason for causing the trips anyway because on the previous models you could only charge on the one side of your laptop. There was only one spot where you could plug in your MagSafe adapter but on your new MacBooks, you can plug it in on either side. So you can plug it in on the side that is least likely to get yanked. The third kind of gripe I have with this MacBook is the inconsistent battery life. That is probably everyone's biggest gripe about the laptop. And I have to say that it has been true in my case. The range of battery life that I have gotten has been as high as about 12 hours and as low as about five, five and a half hours. So that's quite a big discrepancy doing the same things. So sometimes I will have VLC player playing a video in the background. You know, I have Word open or maybe Microsoft Excel, sometimes pages, and the battery has ranged from, like I said, about five and a half hours to almost 12, maybe even slightly higher than 12 hours. So that is my biggest gripe about the MacBook is the inconsistent battery life. It's not enough for me to return the laptop and get a different laptop or stick with my old laptop. It actually doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. For the most part, I've had pretty good battery life with the new MacBook, um, but there has been some occasions where my battery life tends to decrease a lot more quickly than in other situations, even when I'm doing similar tasks. So moving on to the things that I like about this MacBook, I really like the new keyboard. It is a different keyboard style than the previous MacBook Pros. It's very similar to the MacBooks in the sense that it is the butterfly style mechanism. And I actually really like the short key travel. It took a little bit of getting used to, but now that I'm used to it, I find that I actually type faster and I don't mind the slightly louder click noise coming from the keyboard. It's something that I got used to pretty easily and I just find that I type a lot quicker on the you know shorter keys. 
I also really like the form factor of this laptop. It is thin, it is fairly light, it is actually almost the same weight as my previous 13 inch MacBook, which is kind of crazy. And it is really easy just to carry around with you. Obviously the 13 inch is much more travel friendly, but this 15 inch isn't, isn't bad to travel with. It was only maybe about an inch larger than my previous MacBook Pro. So in terms of carrying it around, this is actually a little bit nicer because it's thinner, so it fits in my bags a little bit easier and it's not as bulky. The trackpad on the new MacBook Pros is enormous. It is twice as big, maybe even three times as big as my old MacBook's trackpad, but it actually is really nice. It allows you to do your gestures a lot more smoothly, so you never have to lift and you know start again. It gets from one side of the screen to the other without any interruption. I also really love that it's a force touch trackpad. Because this is a glass force touch trackpad, you can click anywhere on the trackpad and it will be just as responsive and I really like the force touch I've gotten used to it on my iPhone and it's actually quite handy the screen is also really nice I did not have a retina screen in my previous MacBook so having the retina screen now is amazing everything just looks so clear and crisp and the color gamut is really nice and the brightness is really great it's actually really bright so when you are in a really bright room, you can still see what's on your screen. And I found that it is slightly less glary. The fact that it no longer has the glowing apple on the lid is both sad, but also really nice. I actually prefer it without the lit apple logo. And the reason I like it is because when you are in a dimly lit room or at night when it's like pitch black and you're just on your laptop, I actually really found the glowing apple logo to be quite disturbing. I know that there's a fine line between people who love Windows and PC and Android products and then people who love Apple products but I am obviously in the latter because I have the watch I have the phone I have the TV I have the laptop and I am very happy living in the Apple ecosystem of course all the hardware doesn't quite make sense to me like the fact that my phone doesn't have a headphone jack but my laptop does the fact that the charger that came with my phone is USB 3 but all the ports on my new laptop are USB-C. It is all very confusing right now, but every Apple product that I own just works seamlessly together. My phone airdrops to my laptop, my watch unlocks my laptop, I can airplay from my phone and my laptop to my TV because I have the Apple TV. That is one of my favorite things about Apple products. Because one company controls the hardware and also the software, everything just works and that's how I like it. Touch ID has always been a feature on the iPhones. So when it came into the MacBooks, I was very excited about it because I know it doesn't seem like much to type in your password every time, but it is so much more efficient and also fun to use Touch ID to log into your MacBook. The last thing I really, really like, potentially even love about the new MacBooks is the touch bar. To me, it is not a gimmick. It is actually a really handy tool but it hasn't reached its full potential yet because it's new and not a lot of developers have incorporated the Touch ID into their apps yet. But once they do, I feel like it is going to be even better than it already is. I don't know about you guys, but I rarely use the function buttons. On any of the MacBook Pros that currently have the physical you know, function key buttons, um, you'll notice that it has the function key number and then also there is another system button that it duels as. So for me, I actually never had those buttons default as the function key. I always had them defaulted as the system preferences because that is what I use the most. I didn't want to have to use the function button in order to increase the volume or decrease the screen brightness. I just wanted to be able to do it with a single push of a button. So that is why I love the new touch bar because it actually changes depending on what app you're using. So if you're using Final Cut Pro, the 
touch bar changes to specific Final Cut Pro functions. If you're using Pixelmator, it changes to specific Pixelmator or photo editing functions. And to me, that is much more helpful than having the general static function keys because I personally never use the function keys unless I was using one specific app and that was Microsoft Excel because I used it for the shortcuts. For any of the other apps, I actually never use the function keys at all. I really like how you can customize the touch bar so all of your most used functions you can have right at the tip of your finger. If there are certain apps like Microsoft Excel where you actually use the function keys, you can set it up so that whenever you open that app, those function keys will be the default setting. So I really like the touch bar. I don't think it's a gimmick at all. I love being able to scroll through emojis. I know that seems really unnecessary, but it's fun. I love being able to answer and decline phone calls that I receive on my MacBook using the touch bar. So I'm excited to see where apps are gonna take the touch bar because I think it is a great function to utilize more. Did I mention the speakers? Because the speakers on the new MacBook Pro are really good. They don't sound like Bose speakers by any means, but they're much louder than the previous generation, much louder than the generation I had. Um, they're so clear and crisp and they just sound really, really good. Before I end this video, I'm going to touch on one more controversial thing about this MacBook and it would be the adapters. So yes, because this is just USB-C ports, four of them, uh, two on each side and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you don't get the traditional legacy ports, except for the headphone jack. It hasn't bothered me that much. Yes, I did have to spend a few extra dollars and buy a few, I mean 50 to $60 on uh, adapters for this MacBook. This MacBook does not even have an SD card slot, so I had to pick up one of these adapters that just plugs into the side of the laptop that has SD card, micro SD card, and then two USB 3 type ports, and also another USB-C. And then I also picked up a couple of these Apple adapters. So this is for USB-C to USB 3. And yes, it is um, a little bit of a hassle at first to one, pick one of these up because right out of the box, if you don't buy any other cables and you don't buy the adapters, you would not be able to charge your current iPhone to your new MacBook Pro. So you definitely have to pick up the adapters, but now that I've gotten used to them and it took me a couple of days to get used to it, I actually don't mind the adapters and it's not as much of a hassle as I thought it would be. So when I'm traveling with it or sometimes when I'm not using it, I just tuck away in this sleeve and this sleeve I got from Amazon has a bunch of different, you know, slots in it and I just throw all of my adapters in here. So my laptop and the adapters and the charger are all in one place. So I never am in a place where I'm thinking, oh no, I don't have that with me because I'll always be traveling with this case and then I'll always have my adapters. So that's definitely something that I thought would bother me more than it has. It actually doesn't bother me at all now and I don't mind the adapters. I don't mind using them. Yes, it is a bit of a pain to spend the extra couple of bucks to buy the adapters, but you're buying such an expensive machine anyway, so what's another 50 bucks? I also thought that I would really, really hate the fact that this laptop did not have an SD card, but it actually doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. With my previous MacBook, I actually broke the SD card um, slot anyway, so I had a uh, an adapter that I had to pick up. I was already kind of used to having an adapter, requiring an adapter to load anything from an SD card onto my laptop. So that transition was pretty smooth. And I actually really like that it doesn't have the SD card slot because of the fact that I have experience breaking the SD card slot. I've actually broken an SD card in the slot and now I don't have to worry about that. If my SD card adapter stops working, I can just pick up a new one. It'll cost probably 15, 20, 30 bucks, as opposed to taking my laptop to Apple when my Apple Care runs out and having to shell out an arm and a leg to have them fix that because it is an internal component. Anyway, so long story short is a lot of the things that I thought would bug me actually don't, and a lot of the things that I thought would be gimmicks actually aren't. 
So overall, I'm really happy with my purchase and I have no regrets. That is my hopefully quick video on my new MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. If you're on the fence of whether you should buy one or not to buy one, I hope you found something helpful in this video to kind of help you with that decision. If you do have a MacBook Pro, let me know what your battery life experience has been because like I said, mine has been inconsistent and I'm interested in seeing how your experience with this new laptop is. So let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!